German banking economist Richard Werner was selected as a global leader for tomorrow by the World Economic Forum in Davos in 2003. Here, he tells us an insider's view of what to soon expect and says the only way to survive the Great Reset is for us to immediately begin setting up our own banking system. In each domicile, they should be locally set up and authorized by the local uh, regulators. And it's a profitable investment. Banking is profitable. Yeah. So the investors would get a return while the local community would get a return. And it's a way of delaying, perhaps even preventing the introduction of CBDCs. They have, you know, they have literally delayed their agenda because I think it's so important to them. They've been very careful about the timing and they've, oh, let's wait a little longer. Let's wait a little longer. Let's have this crisis first. Oh, let's have COVID first, you know, soften them up. But they've delayed because the technology was really ready um, around 2015 to roll out. Mm -hmm. And what, what people don't mention is what do these CBDCs actually look like? You know, um, at the moment, there's a bit of talk about this being phone based apps. And yes, that is the initial phase. But what was already ready around 2015 is the ultimate goal. What they really want, apparently, I was told by a central banker is, you know, CBDC looks like a small grain of rice that they want to put on this a hurdle. So <laughs> to get people to get people to accept this, there will be, you know, why, why suddenly all the billionaires saying, let's have universal basic income? Because the story is going to be, oh, now we've created, you've created this vast unemployment and, and uh, disruption and crises. Well, we need universal basic income. You will get uh, 2,000 euros into your account every month. But of course, to run this efficiently, we need to use the latest technology. So, you know, you, you need the <laughs> CBDC plant. But how many people will say, OK, fine, 2,000 pounds, uh, 2,000 euros, you know. Um. A, surprising, <laughs> a, a surprising proportion, shockingly, obviously, to me or yourself. But we've seen uh, years ago in Sweden, there has been a substantial small minority take up of what's currently much larger. It's kind of like a little cylinder in stainless steel, I guess. Maybe it's titanium or something. Uh, and they are doing it because they just want to. They want to be early adopters of this nonsense. So if anyone's listening and that sounds fanciful or conspiracy theorish, uh, the fact is in Sweden, they are taking it up and in other places, and that's not coming out of nowhere. The Bank for International Settlements recently published a report called Blueprint for the Future Monetary System, Improving the Old, Enabling the New. This report proposes that a central bank digital currency will serve as the new reserve currency and calls for the digital confiscation of all physical property by assigning every real-world item its own unique digital token, which will contain rules on how each item can and cannot be used, so that each person can be controlled and conditioned directly by the central bank. What are global cabal theories and why do so many people believe them? The global cabal theory, it has many variations, but basically there is a small group of people, a small cabal, that secretly controls everything that is happening in the world. All the wars, all the revolutions, all the epidemics, everything that is happening is controlled by this very small group of people who are, of course, evil and have bad intentions. And this is, this is a, a very well-known story. That it's not new. It's been there for thousands of years. It's very attractive uh, because, first of all, it's simple. And also, it creates, it, it, it creates this fantasy utopian fantasy, if we only get rid of the small cabal, we solved all the problems of the world. Salvation. Some people would say this revolution is characterized by the fight of robots against human beings. And we will win this fight. Professor Klaus Schwab was born in 1938 in Ravensburg, Germany, where Nazi crimes against humanity were committed. His father, Eugene Wilhelm Schwab, was the managing director of Escher Weiss Ravensburg, a company that used slave labor to manufacture weapons of war for the Third Reich. While Klaus's father was at the helm, the Nazi party awarded Escher Weiss Ravensburg the title of National Socialist Model Company. Years later, Klaus Schwab joined the board of directors at Escher Weiss Ravensburg, 
where he played a key role in the development of South Africa's nuclear weapons program during the darkest years of the racist apartheid regime. Today, Klaus Schwab is the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. If you'd like to meet the people who are supposed to repair the state of the world, or give a piece of your mind to the bankers who help get us into this mess, we can tell you where to find a lot of them. The World Economic Forum. Founded in 1971, the World Economic Forum is an international private organization which receives billions of tax-free dollars from its members and their global enterprises. Every year, the WEF brings together its members with world leaders, big pharma executives, tech titans, Hollywood celebrities, media personalities, and internet influencers to meet in the secluded mountains of Davos, Switzerland. It is a tiny town folded into the Swiss Alps, a village where you could bump into Bill Clinton, Bill Gates, the head of Google, and the Queen of Jordan, all in one place. A lot of reporters cover the forum, but few get inside. It turns out there are two Davoses, one you see and one you don't. After hours, there are hundreds of private parties where deals are done. People who can't be seen together in public can meet here. 2014, Klaus Schwab called for the Great Reset. We need a Great Reset. Which he positioned as the solution to the world's most urgent issues. The dark reality of Schwab's agenda is detailed in his best-selling book, COVID-19, The Great Reset. His in-game mission is to replace independent governance with a top-down controlled, one-world government and a central bank-controlled digital currency. When they say, you'll be happy, what they mean is, you'll be enslaved. That's why they're talking about a Great Reset. That's why they're talking about introducing this quasi-communist, quasi-socialist agenda. They know we've run the course where we cannot continue down the path of the ever-increasing indebtedness because we have a generation that quite literally cannot afford to buy a house. Artificial intelligence, the metaverse, synthetic biology, our life in 10 years from now will be completely different and who masters those technologies will be the master of the world. Similar to his protege, Justin Trudeau, Klaus Schwab makes a fascinating case study. Yet he too is merely the master of his own world, economic forum. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. Today, we have the technology to hack human beings on a massive scale. And by this, I mean that if you have enough data and you have enough computing power, you can understand people better than they understand themselves. And then you can manipulate them in ways which were previously impossible. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have this soul or spirit and they have free will, that's over. Now, how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data.